Hi everyone and welcome back to Yosemite Valley and welcome back to another time lapse of this wonderful project. Thank you so much for tuning in again and also um, welcome to the Elephant House build today. It's been over an entire month that I have been building in the zoo. Um, Mr. Harry Bow himself has been building in the zoo. He's done the incredible airlock kind of cabin area at the very beginning of the north entrance of the zoo and he's also brought in his incredible modern ape house which um, well you know we talked about already in the last little update video uh, I will change a little bit however in case you haven't seen the update video and you don't know what's going on please make sure to click the link now to the top right I will um, link this video from Wednesday there where I'm going to discuss a little bit what's happening and stuff and then you can come back to this video and watch it so you know what's going on now today we're talking about the elephant house we will have like a time-lapse section and a real-time section at the end let me already spoil you a tiny little bit the entire area will not be done but the building itself is like let's say 90% done there is some detail work but you know this kind of detail work will be done later once I have a feeling for the entire area you know that I kind of want to you know always try to embed this as naturally as possible and I think if if there's one big strength of this project it's kind of the natural feel of Yosemite and this is also where partly the critics um, and the criticism about the ape house from Haribo came from I think the build itself is basically unquestionable it is incredibly well done but you know I kind of understood what you guys were telling when you were talking about the, the you know just at least putting it up to question if it is fitting the style and you know I think it's it's fair to talk about this later on but you know uh, I, I think there's not that much I'm going to do but anyways um today we are talking about the elephant habitat and oh boy this is a build I wanted to do for such an incredibly long time the reason why is that I think the, the elephant might be the one animal I learned the most about during the period of Planet Zoo. Like, you know, there are some animals that you think you know a whole bunch about, but then it turns out you do know nothing about it. And the elephant, especially the African elephant, was one of those animals where I really thought, you know, what 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 would be there, I don't know, you know, it's it's kind of, you know everything, okay? So that's kind of how you arrogantly as we are sometimes in the central european area uh, we're like hey we just know it all you know we, we learn in school you know it's all bad about the ivory and stuff you know it's it's you know everything's bad but there's like so much i learned like what, what the function of the elephant ears is and why they the most of the habitats look so bare bone and boring of these animals um because they're so destructive and and why they do it and you know all this kind of knowledge that i don't know i i think none of us really like you know I, i'm talking about us uh, in terms of the european normal educated persons that just had some animals in school uh will not think about because well potentially you've gone to to a zoo with a school i don't even know do you still do this nowadays let me know in the comments down below please for those you know of you who's who are still in school is this like still a thing like doing school trips to uh, zoos i mean when there is not just like a virus going on right now but i mean in general is this still kind of a thing because i don't know i i remember that i've been to the zoo multiple times with my uh, school i you know to be fair i think the last two times i was more interested in the girls than in the zoo itself uh, to be completely honest with you but <laughs> this um was at the later stage of my uh, school career so to say uh but no i'm just you know I'm, I'm just like kind of um thinking about if if i were when the last time was and if it's still done i don't know but any house um let's talk about uh, well that's kind of no pun intended but any house uh, we we are talking about the house itself now now the idea about this entire habitat is that it is basing on uh, one of the more modern builds that you will find out there where a lot of risen planters are across the habitat to make it look at least a little bit more natural and beautiful uh, but at the same time make sure that the animals cannot get actually to the plants so that they are not destroying them and most of the the animal traversable area is well kind of bare bone kind of sand kind of just a, a, a big flat okay it's almost not even grassland <laughs> it's just really flat land but you know it's uh, i think it's very interesting still and um, the idea is to have that big house here where they are living in, uh, where you also have like a viewing platform, which is why we are building this kind of slope over here to bring them up here. I'm going to talk about the slope in a 
few seconds a bit more, but let's finish up uh, the little sentence about the the building. Now, as I, I wanted to do it like that, we have kind of a winter, view, a winter viewing when, you know, the temperatures are cold and the animals will be more inside, then you still have the possibility to, to have a look inside. But, you know, most of the times, and I will talk about that a bit more in the real-time part, uh, most of the times in summer, the animals are outside and you still have enough viewing opportunities, so you can, some you know, shut some windows inside and make sure that the animals have the privacy they need and you know that is kind of the idea about it and honestly this is also where the backstage access is going to be granted for our staff members but now let's talk about this slope and this slope is um, kind of tackling a little bit of the criticism I have received in the past especially in Kuali Zoo and I guess it mostly was very valid um, criticism and I'm you know I'm also I'm not feeling bad to kind of uh, say that Honestly, the path work is almost the, the most annoying thing to do. And in all that I did for um, for Kuali, I really try to actively avoid the path work as much as possible. Sometimes, because you may have Mike in your in your mind and you know that he's going to change it anyway. So, so you're not actively touching it too much but you know, because you're not like, why would I even do it when he's going to change that? But no, you know, jokes aside... I tried to do something more interesting in here just to make sure that this is really fitting this time. And so I created this more like um, kind of serpentine left to right uh, little slope going up this hill. Very gentle so that you do have uh, some wheelchair access there as well. Um, and we will do something similar later on with the ramp that goes up to another viewing spot. Not only for the elephants but also for the wonderful river area in general. But uh, before we do so, you can see I'm creating a little bit of a, a wall over here that is going to block the view from the backside and backstage area towards the actual guest area. And, you know, this is something that will go through the entire zoo. And this is going to be over here one of the more major main hubs. I have no real idea how to connect them, but I guess I will end up building a tunnel, or like not building, but kind of using a fake tunnel that is connecting the backstage areas from the South American area with the domes and the uh, big cat area, which is still on the main side of the river, and this African area, which is almost like on this half-ish island uh, in, in the middle of this river side over here. I do not want to have the backstage going all across uh, this area here, so just like around the river i want to make sure that this is somewhat connected via a tunnel and well you know maybe i'm even building the tunnel and just kind of you know making like an ugly tunnel so that at least the staff members are using it so you can see them pathing in and out the doors and i'm just kind of building a tunnel uh, entrance and exit which looks nice and then you know we can we can leave the tunnel barebone let me know in the comments what you think about the tunnel idea to connect uh, the different areas what you think that is kind of something that they would do in a, in a zoo like that i mean mostly it is supernatural um, and mostly I'm, I'm trying to keep it as, as natural as possible. But we're just coming into an area where the zoo also is not like super old and generic and let's say budget. We do have some more money. It's not like that this zoo is super rich and doing like the kind of Summer Lake Disney-ish style. Um, this is also partly the reason why Planet of the Apes was removed so early on because I just felt it's not fitting the entire story about this zoo. But I think, you know, later on in the story of the zoo, I think it would be possible that at least they built one uh, wonderful thing here. But, you know, I'm, I'm just like not entirely sure if it makes sense or not. Um, but yeah, we will see. We will see. We will see. It's uh, kind of uh, this little, this little uh, thinking I always have going on here. And I, yeah, I'm just... I'm just trying to come up with all these ideas uh, to make sure that the story is kind of uh, coherent and, and makes sense, but at the same time it's also exciting and like, you know, just, just kind of brings in a bit of an element of surprise now and then. Um, but anyways, we are going even more now into the intricate build here and oh boy, I can't tell you how annoying this pathing path was again. Um, as I said, I spent a bit more time this time looking into the pathing path and Yes, truth to be told, this area over here won't be accessible by wheelchair persons. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, I was considering even building a ramp or like a like an elevator style thing. But I guess at the end of the day, this would be a, a bit too cost expensive here. Um, you know, talking of the story just a few seconds ahead uh, of, you know, um, ago, I should say. Not, not ahead, ago. Uh, this, this doesn't make too much sense um, and would be not really aligned with the story of the zoo. So this is going to be an underpass that goes um, 
into another underwater viewing for the elephants. And there will still be a huge ramp, as you've seen just a few seconds before, that has been built um, for wheels wheelchair access. And on the other side, there will be also a bit more of a viewing gallery accessible to the wheelchair persons and other disabled uh, people. And this is kind of something I, I just wanted to make sure that this is brought in. But you can see there was a huge pain um, covering up all these ugly bits and pieces here. I still back front here to remove those curbs from raised path things. I mean, yes, the, the path system we all know is kind of finicky. It's kind of wonky. It's kind of, I don't know. But still, there are some little things I would be like, they would be total game changers for me. And this is kind of removing this ugly little thing called curb on, on the raised path. Like, I, there's barely any situation where it makes sense. Like, I, I do use the curbing on ground sometimes, if it makes sense to kind of fill in an area nicely. But the curbing on raised areas is, I think I, I, think I never left it open, except maybe it's two or three times in the last four years where I built like a pier or like kind of something that use it I guess or maybe an area where I kind of forgot about it and that might be the sole occasion to like even in franchise I'm trying to to cover them up as much as possible just because I I think well they are so ugly I just don't know I'm I don't what do you think do you like them like aesthetically like let's not talk about the function you know let's talk about them aesthetically do you, I I just don't like them I guess um I mean it's a per totally personal thing here but I don't like them <laughs> it's, it's it's simple simple as that but you know um one thing i wanted to talk before i leave you alone with like a like two or three minutes with time lapse before we jump into the real time part um now this is all kind of tidying up the, uh, the habitat as much as possible but you can see that most of the work layouting it and you know kind of creating this beautiful look to it um is done at this point and it will be very cool in the next let's say two or three episodes which by the way i'm not kind of saying anything here when I'm going to release that because I have no single idea if and when I will upload more of this stuff. Um, I think I will focus a bit more on Summer Lake to bring this to an end somehow, you know, um, because summer is like not eternal and I want to finish that up in summer. And honestly, though, if at any time given in the future there will be a DLC again for this game um, I might you know if it's if it's fitting I might kind of include that into Summer Lake and if not um, I, I definitely want to make something else with the DLC and just move on and go back to Yosemite a bit more uh, you know a bit more time into this project over here because I think we have some some good time in Yosemite and there's still some potential in this project that I will spend a bit more time doing this but as of now I have no idea when the next episode after this one will drop hopefully not uh, in a month's time again but you know you never know uh, but yeah just this is whatever I wanted to say uh, in in the time lapse you will see me dressing up a few more of the planters now and just making sure there's a bit more nature and then I will take you with me on a little tour in the real time part so Enjoy the last couple of minutes of time lapse and then we'll talk to each other again in the real time part. And if you are lazy and kind of uh, tired of the time lapse, you can just click the jump mark in the or the timestamp in the YouTube video down below.
All right, everyone, here we are in the real time part. I'm just going to quickly disable the hut and the UI. So here we go. And this is the more or less finished elephant habitat. Now, the reason why I say more or less is because there are a few little things I need to do. Potentially, I will do them off screen for the next episode, which again, I, I won't promise when it will be. I'm, I'm trying to go maybe for a little bit of a switchback between uh, Summer Lake and this one. But maybe if I'm, you know, depends a little bit on how productive I am. So I'm, I'm quite giving myself a little bit of time now by pushing out these episodes a little bit you know um, more space in between uh, to make sure that I have the time to prepare some stuff and uh, yeah because also at the end of this uh, month of August I might be in holidays it's not kind of sure right now because of the situation going on in the world you know it's kind of unsecure at the moment so maybe not uh, who knows but yeah we are here in the real time part and as you can see this is the elephant habitat and I'm not like super sure what we have already covered in the timeline uh, recording because I'm recording this previous to the actual time lapse uh, voiceover, which um, is kind of a specialty. I have no. Actually, sometimes it just turns out when I'm finished, I will do the uh, voiceover in the real time part already uh, because this is kind of closest to when I've built. Now, you can see. And this is how the habitat turned out. And one of the major issues, like game-wise, is that this habitat is not big enough, as you can see. They have quite a huge water area, though. Um, the um, the sand and kind of the terrain is perfectly fine. But you can see that the traversable area is by far too small. However, one thing I wanted to show you is partly the reason why. And this is because the traversable area of the elephants is just absolutely horrendous. It just like, look at how much of a kind of block is happening once you put anything down. Um, I think it's fair to say that if the game would calculate that a little bit more realistic, the space of this habitat would be a lot, like a lot more realistic, especially in here in the house. You can see how much it's kind of blocked over here. The elephants can barely go anywhere. Um, so it's just about okay. And they just about have enough shelter. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of one thing I do hate um, because, you know, the elephants are very specific when it comes to this. But just clicking on the habitat, you can see they actually would have way more land area available. So it's 3,636 square meters. And if you click on the animal, you can see it's only having this amount of space, which is ridiculous because this is only because of the blocked area. And I think because this is a sandbox and it really doesn't matter how much they actually have, I'm, I'm quite okay at saying that this is fine the way it is because realistically it has the right size and we're going for more classical habitat style anyways so this is also the reason why I think it's fine to go with the size but let me know in the comments down below if you think something else but you know just just considering that this is kind of the um, habitat I wanted to build for a very 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 long time I'm just very happy with it because honestly speaking this is kind of exactly what I wanted to build for this elephant habitat from the very beginning when I was planning the zoo. It's very classical, it has these different layers, it has these big planters somewhere to make sure that they don't go and destroy all the plants because as we know elephants are super destructive and therefore they you know should have some kind of separation between the plants actually and their area to traverse. You can see it's very it's very bare bone, the, the ground stuff. But yeah, let me just show you around a little bit. So we have this little um, switch uh, switchback pathway leading to the inside of the habitat. Let me just quickly show this because there is a little special thing in here. If you've seen it in the time lapse, you know, but you know, this is, this is having the shutters over here. And um, I think it's kind of cool because, you know, realistically the way you would use them is that in case it's summertime and the animals are outside anyways, you can close these shutters. Okay. And then once they're closed, the animals have a bit of privacy in the house and they can, you know, just rest and without being looked at the whole time. And they the outside is still, you know, uh, offering a lot of viewing uh, platforms and viewing spaces for the guests. While in winter time, when the elephants are potentially more inside of the house, you can actually close these doors and just make sure that, you know, they do have, um, I know, open the door, sorry, um, that, that the guests have a view inside here. One thing, like the two things I still need to do. Um, the one thing is I wanted to make like some huge doors that are kind of kept open or closed. And then I just removed them again because one of the biggest issues of having these big doors 
even though they might look cool, it's again taking away even more traversable areas. So instead, I think I'm going to build like a little bit of a shutter that goes down, um, but this is just kind of a minor little detail I need to add later on for the realism aspect of it, uh, just to make sure that this, you know, kind of would be able to be closed because otherwise in the winter times it might be a bit cold for them. But yeah, so this is this is one side we have here. And then obviously we do have this lower part, which is also having a wonderful underwater view of this little pond over here. I'm, I'm still not sure if I want to make this whole thing also concrete so that there are some big steps in here and making this look like a bit more in the zoo or if we keep it that natural, even though I need to put some kind of plants or at least some stones in because it, it, it kind of looks very dull at the moment. And then, you know, going through this little area, you can see that there is this stair going up into this uh, right-hand side area of this and you have this big, big old glass screen here so you can see the animals there's some education down and you know if you want to see these animals from a bit more up close uh, you can actually walk up this little incline to this spot over here and then just stand here and have a look inside the wonderful habitat and I think now it really turns out to be looking kind of cool with the waterfall um, element and the lines in the background so you can really it's starting to look like um, a plan here you know as if I really planned that out and honestly this little bit was planned out in my mind at least and you can really tell that the African animals are working well together. You have the elephant here in the water and then it almost seems like the lions are just living in the same area. There's just this river separating them both. Um, sure, we do have this weird thing in the water, but you know, that's kind of the, the main thing you need because there is otherwise not that much of a potential. I could have done it this way, but the elephants are a bit more... Um, crazy when it comes to climbing over these rocks in the water. I don't know why they have this... <laughs> they need I need a laugh, but it just kind of this elephant was like completely running from over here to this thing. It's like almost crashed in it like crazy. That was kind of funny. But yeah, this is the this is the habitat, guys. And honestly, I I think I really love it. I think I'm I'm a big, big fan of this habitat because it, it really makes exactly what I wanted it to make. It, kind of fills this void, this gap over here um, very naturally. It, it makes this look as really it, as one, it was always meant to be here, you know. Um, I still need to do some kind of nature work over here. I'm just planning to make like a little bit of a seating platform here so people can recreate here and have a wonderful look to this lake. And then you, you have this incredible vista with the half dome, um, which I think already is looking pretty thick. Um, and if you have something to sit down here and just, you know, get yourself some drinks and stuff, I think that would be awesome. And then to the other side, you have the elephant habitat, just in case uh, you want to sit down and chill a little bit. This is kind of cool. And just, I mean, I mean, look at that. Just this elephant just kind of chilling in front of Half Dome. I mean, can it be any more picturesque? I don't know if it can. This one is going to take a bath here. <laughs> awesome. It is, oh God, guys, it's, it's just working all like a charm here. I love it. I really hope you guys appreciated this episode while everyone is just taking a chill right now. Um, this, this dude is just going to have a little bath and yeah. Guys, um, thank you for tuning in. I really hope you guys had a, a blast as um, just as I had because I really was missing Yosemite Valley. So in case you did as well, um, I hope I could fulfill your desperate desire to have a bit more content of this zoo. And as I said already in Wednesday's little update, please make sure to comment down below which kind of habitats you want to see next and specifically focus on animals that are not in the game yet because I want to make sure that Yosemite now becomes a little bit of an outlet where we are focusing on a new animals that are not in the game and you know whatever frontier is going to add in the future um, maybe we maybe we are able to hit at least one or two that we can use then and we prepared some habitats for and if not we can always change them to something else I guess and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to this and um, I yeah as I said I just hope you enjoyed until then have a wonderful time everyone and stay safe